So route authentication, why would you consider it and what is the technology around it? So why use route authentication? It provides for two very important things, data origin authentication and data integrity. So with data origin authentication, you can be fairly certain which routing peer sent the actual update. And with data integrity, you know that none of the routing data was modified in transit. So both of these properties alleviate the risk of maliciously intentional TCP resets, which would be uh, very important in BGP to cause route reconvergence. And also it alleviates the risk of altering a packet or sending duplicate packets, both which could have adverse effects on routing infrastructure and either alter the path of the data or render the network unavailable. So very commonly people use uh, route authentication to alleviate the TCP resets um, that is a protocol flaw uh, that could be a problem with BGP. But you do have to think about how realizable is this. So to do a malicious TCP reset, an attacker would need to predict the target's choice of the expected sequence number and the spoof packet would have to be sent with the reset bit enabled which then of course would reset the TCP connection and would cause the route convergence. So you always have to also consider how likely is an attack realizable that you're trying to use a security feature to protect against. Let's take a look at how plain text neighbor authentication works. This does not use any kind of cryptographic protection, but what happens is that uh, two different routers, let's say I have a router in Santa Cruz and one in Tallinn, they each have a database of keys associated with a particular router. So if the router from Santa Cruz is sending a routing update to a router in Tallinn, it would then add the key that's associated with itself to the routing update. Tallinn would then take a look at the routing update that the Santa Cruz router sent it, look up in its database the key. If both keys match, it would accept the routing update. If the keys don't match, the routing update would be rejected. However, the problem here is that anybody sniffing the wire could be sniffing what the key looks like and then could potentially impersonate some kind of a routing peer. Much better is to use cryptographic protection. And for route authentication, the fundamental building block is a hash function. What is a hash function? It's a mathematical function that takes an input message of arbitrary length and gives an output that is fixed length. So the output is called either a hash, a message digest, or even a fingerprint. Some of the common algorithms are MD5, which has a 128-bit output, SHA-1, 160-bit output, or there's variants of algorithms called SHA-2, that have either 224, 256, 384, or 512 bit outputs. So there's a number of different hash functions. Again, as cryptography improves over time, my older algorithms are known to be susceptible to attacks themselves. So you also have to think about, well, which hash function might you want to use? So some of the properties of hash algorithms are that you cannot deduce the input from the output. And also, you can have two inputs which produce the same output. If these two properties aren't true, that means that there's a potential collision, and that's a problem with hash functions, which is why over time you will find if older algorithms have collisions, newer ones get invented and, and recommended. So let's take a look at route authentication and how it typically works. Um, using cryptographic protection and hash functions. It's also sometimes called MD5 authentication. Can you guess why? Because MD5 is a commonly known hash function that's used. So let's take a look at how this works. The peer routers would have a shared secret. So think of that as a password configured on both routers. The sending router would then take that shared secret and the routing update and run it through the hash algorithm, let's assume it's MD5, and then you get the output called a hash or message digest or fingerprint, and with MD5 that would be a 128-bit string. 
that 128-bit string would then be appended to the routing update and together they would be sent over the wire to the receiving router. The receiving router would then take the routing update and hash and then keep the hash somewhere in memory. In parallel, it would then take the shared secret that it has configured, take the routing update, run it through the same hash function, i.e. MD5, and get its own hash output of 128 bits. So the computed hash function is then compared to the one it received from the peer router. If they match, the routing update is accepted. If they don't match, the routing update is rejected. With MD5 authentication, or even SHA-1, if that's something that the router vendor is able to handle, or SHA-2, but route authentication using cryptography can be utilized for any routing protocol. There are RFCs on how to do this for OSPF, ISIS, BGP. And here's some of the configuration examples. As you can see, it's quite simple. Now, we know that any time that you're thinking about using some kind of security feature, you do have to compare the cost of utilizing the security feature that mitigates the risk and make sure that utilizing it is more effective than the cost of what you're actually trying to protect. So is route authentication useful? Well, that really depends on your environment. You do have to think about the operational considerations. So one is rekeying. First of all, how effective is it? Right? Is it seamless from the vendor that you're using so that when you're actually changing keys, i.e. the passwords, that you don't have session loss, which then could cause route recomputation and some downtime. Um, I know that in some environments, they're very systematic in terms of how they do the rekeying of their route authentication. And some of them, quite frankly, haven't done it in years because it's too much of a risk of some downtime. What is the likelihood that software can have bugs that you can't really deal with? What is the likelihood that if you have a multi-vendor scenario with uh, multiple different router vendors, are there going to be interoperability issues? You should really look into that. And what is the likelihood that you will have more of an operational risk where devices are misconfigured? So again, you need to think about this in your own environment. I think in some environments it makes sense. I also think in some it doesn't. And you really have to make that determination for yourself. Thank you.